Uh, another significant entry, of Absolutely. course, the uh, Crown Prince uh, Mohammed bin Salman of Saudi Arabia. Given the announcement, we're expecting to hear later this evening, particularly yes. uh, significant. Uh, we'll have to see how he's greeted. But uh, right. there is a bilateral coming up on uh, Monday. On that's uh, right, 11th. the state visit. the The relationship between India and uh, Saudi Arabia is significant, of course, from an energy perspective, also from a trade perspective. And there you go. You see him smiling. You know he's. Uh, seen the Indian Prime Minister. There is that big handshake, hands reaching out to each, oh, each other. Hug. And a hug. And a couple of pats on the back as well. <laughs> Double-handed handshake. Firm handshake as you can make out. <laughs> Nearly four times they shake each other's hands properly. And he escorts him out further. What do we know about uh, the, the state visit plans? As of now, I think it's a schedule, of course, as soon as G20 gets over, the uh, Prime Minister Modi has had a packed schedule with the ASEAN summit coming back, leading into the bilateral yeah, talks. Yeah, really and then has G20. been being a jet setter. It, yes, exactly. And uh, the man does not get tired. It is very apparent. 11th September, of course, uh, you know, after 10th. And, uh, you know, uh, and that's when uh, the, the meeting is expected, the bilateral meeting. Uh, Molly and Siddhant, uh, you both are still there very much on ground. Of course, you're going to be covering all the biggest developments. Mm -hmm. Siddhant, I'd like to just come to you. Anything more you observed that we missed out on the screens? Anything more you tell us? Uh, uh, you know, who all else is left to make to uh, the, the venue? And uh, when do we get to start? Well, uh, this summit is going to start very uh, soon, in perhaps next 20 minutes. But what I noticed was hug with the Arabs, yes. uh, also smiles with the Europeans and the, uh, and, and the Americans. I will not say cold handshakes with which country, <laughs> but yes, uh, uh, the Chinese premier was there and we saw the body language. Uh, right. But all in all, it was very interesting to note the dynamics and we will see more such dynamics as the leaders enter into the plenary hall. They're right now in the holding rooms, visuals we can't see, but visuals that will be released later on and visuals that will be telling more uh, in terms of how leaders uh, deal with each other. Uh, remember, I can give you an example uh, uh, into uh, in 2019 when uh, MBS the crown prince uh, was at the G20 summit after a specific incident which Jessica can talk about in much more detail yeah. which led to relationship between you know, Saudis and the Americans going southwards right. uh, the, after that nobody was very keen in fact the Western leaders were not keen to meet with MBS and it was Putin who was engaging with MBS uh, uh, the most and the Indian Prime Minister that it looks like has has changed the geopolitical course as well. There has been increased engagement between Riyadh and Moscow and Riyadh and New Delhi as well. Uh, but all in all, the, the personal touch of leaders do make uh, a, a, an impact in terms of the relationship, the wider relationship. And that personal chemistry between Indian Prime Minister and several Arab leaders is something uh, that has been quite remarkable uh, given how the relationship has seen a major turnaround when it comes to India, UAE, and Saudi Arabia. I have a question for Molly. Uh, I know that you've probably been able to meet some of my Voice of America colleagues there at the press center. Uh, but the term Global South, which we've used a ton throughout right. this, uh, right. this broadcast, and I think which, which is uh, much more familiar perhaps to the Indian audience than to the American audience, are you finding yourself having any conversations or explaining that term uh, to some of the reporters from outside uh, outside that vantage point. It's interesting that you ask that, uh, Jessica, because uh, this very term has a lot of intrigue attached to it uh, because uh, uh, the voice of the Global South, now that's a term that we've seen being used time and again in the build-up to the G20 summit and uh, the kind of uh, emphasis that India has been laying on uh, making the issues and the challenges to do with the so-called Global South heard. Uh, and uh, uh, given the, uh, the varying ways in which uh, this uh, part of the world, this entire uh, block is referred to um, emerging economies, uh, developing countries, uh, lesser developed countries, and that um, is uh, the very uh, 
indication of uh, the variety of challenges that these countries actually are grappling with. Uh, because uh, uh, let's face it, in the run up to the G20 summit and throughout the negotiations, uh, and even in that virtual meeting that India had led uh, with those uh, emerging economies and uh, the uh, countries from uh, the uh, bloc, uh, it has focused on the multiple challenges, but the common thread that's been running through those challenges has been uh, that of making their voice heard and uh, ensuring that uh, multilateral forums uh, find more participation from these countries um, because of the very fact that uh, they are not finding the kind of prominence that they deserve, that they require and also demand, uh, is uh, also resulting in the gap uh, that we are seeing in uh, uh, the demands being met. And uh, that something that India has very prominently shed a spotlight on and uh, these conversations that we've been having uh, with fellow journalists also talking about uh, the way in which uh, the term has been used uh, so often uh, in the run-up to the G20 summit because of the emphasis that India has laid on uh, emerging as a voice of the global south but also uh, talking about uh, the contrast in which uh, the uh, the uh, block is viewed uh, by uh, the other side of the world as well. Molly, uh, now, you know, while you're there and there are several journalists which have uh, come from all over the world, is there more conversation with uh, these fellow journalists? What's the buzz regarding the outcomes of the G20 summit and what's the overall, uh, you know, flavor or masala like we'd like to call here in India in uh, the, the, uh, the media house over there, the media room that you are in at the moment? Well, uh, we've been talking about uh, the very fact that uh, unanimity as far as the joint declaration uh, is a huge challenge, it's a huge question mark and uh, the uncertainty that comes with uh, finding common ground uh, specifically on the issue of the Ukraine war. Uh, that has been a prominent part of the conversations among the fellow journalists as well as they uh, closely monitor the statements that have been coming in from the leaders as they've been making their way to the national capital for the G20 summit and also now uh, in the bilateral meetings that we will be seeing uh, in a short while from now. Uh, as, uh, uh, as we just discussed, uh, the first session of the summit will be beginning in just a short while. Uh, One Earth, which of course talks about the issue of climate change and finding uh, a global resolution when it comes to the issue of climate action, uh, tripling the global uh, uh, renewable energy capacity by the year 2030, weaning away from fossil fuels. Uh, the, those have been the major uh, focus areas as far as the Indian G20 presidency is concerned and have been sticking points as well because let's face it, a lot of question marks have been raised over whether or not countries have been taking the issue of climate change seriously enough and the responsibility that needs to be shouldered by those who are emitting the most and causing most of those uh, uh, challenges as far as the climate crisis is concerned, which has impacted uh, the vulnerable countries a lot more. So this uh, gap and this desire on part of India uh, to find common ground on this very sticking, uh, on this issue which has been a sticking point, uh, has been uh, a huge challenge and that also finds a prominent mention uh, in uh, the conversations that we've been having, having uh, with fellow journalists as well uh, and uh, just to get you a better idea of uh, uh, where we are uh, requesting our video journalists to just uh, uh, pan across uh, the uh, international media center where we are seeing uh, media delegations from around the world converge as I said dissecting each and every minute of the developments coming out from the G20 summit as the world leaders have already arrived at the G20 venue Bharat Mandapam which has been called the culture corridor uh, which represents the rich cultural diversity and heritage of India and this by the way is just a sample of the color the decorations uh, the uh, mood that we've been witnessing um, throughout uh, uh, early hours of the morning and uh, while we were making our way uh, to uh, the media center as well. Uh, Bharat Mandapam being the epicenter of where the action is and uh, the G20 leaders hope to find uh, a resolution to the global challenges of our time. Uh, like we've been discussing, the Indian G20 presidency coming at a very difficult time. Um, yeah. Uh, seeing the fallout of the Russia-Ukraine war and the divisions that the war has actually caused and to what extent they actually impact the outcome of the summit. Molly, stay with us. I'll just cut back to uh, Siddhant. Siddhant, I did notice when uh, the US president uh, was 
you know, meeting the Indian Prime Minister. All right, I'll uh, stay with you, Molly. I think Siddhant is unable to hear me at the moment. Uh, Molly, when uh, you know when the two leaders were meeting, I did notice how uh, the Indian Prime Minister was uh, showcasing the entire background to their uh, to their meet and greet, uh, where Vasudev Kutumbakam has also, of course, it's very much there and prominently written. China had a problem with Vasudev Kutumbakam. They wanted their uh, Belt and Road Initiative to also be mentioned if India goes ahead and includes Vasudev Kutumbakam in, in terms of uh, the, the, the documents of the G20. Do you feel BRI will be taking a major hit here at the summit, especially in Xi Jinping's absence? Do you feel a parallel uh, reform being made which kind of undermines the BRI? Well, uh, the very fact that the Chinese president decided to give the G20 summit a miss um, has been a, a prominent uh, a part of the discussions uh, that we've been having uh, with fellow journalists here as well. Uh, because let's face it, that's been a, a very important uh, message that goes out to the world uh, because it also leaves room for a lot of uh, speculation, for a lot of question marks, given the fact that the Chinese leader, the Chinese president being, the f uh, this is the first G20 summit that he is skipping uh, in fact going back to his uh, uh, going back to the time of Hu Jintao this is the first time that a Chinese leader has actually skipped a G20 summit so that in itself says a lot now talking about the uh, the various issues that have uh, led to China uh, the Chinese president uh, giving this uh, summit a miss and the Chinese premier